Hello everyone, Eternal Flame here, here to talk about Gojo vs Sukuna, why I don't think Gojo vs Sukuna is over, and what is looking next for this entire fight. However, before we even get into this video and why I don't think Gojo vs Sukuna is quite over yet, be sure to like and subscribe like anime content like this, we on the road to 4k, and it would be a lot of help if you guys did subscribe. You can unsubscribe whenever you want though. So let's get straight into the vid. So first things first, I need to actually prove why this battle is not over, because at the end of chapter 235, Sakuna was put in a really, really bad position after getting Oppenheimer Polo Purple nuked. With Maharaga and Agito now being gone, Sakuna being extremely damaged, and even the characters themselves saying that Gojo has won because Sakuna is extremely damaged and tired, but Gojo has his RCT back purely because of the black flashes, so Gojo is, can now fight at like more of his stamina and energy. And that is what caused Kusakabe to say, hey, Gojo has won. And for anyone who who doesn't know why I'm saying it's Yuji who says it and not the narrator that says it, the narrator either has just pure raw text or has a square type of text bubble. This is an actual just circular type of text bubble, which means it's not the narrator, it's the characters who are saying Gojo is one. So yeah, Sakuna is in a very, very, very bad spot right now. But why am I so confident the battle is not over? Well, that is for a few reasons. Number one, we don't actually know if he's low on curse energy and stamina or not. We would like to believe he is, but none of them can actually see Sakuna's curse energy total and stamina amount right now, and to assume that he is or is not low on curse energy is kinda weird. And before one of you guys say, oh, they can see his curse energy amount, Yuta, for example, says Sakuna has around twice his curse energy. This is based on the fact Sakuna uses several domains and then can still use his own attacks and keep fighting anyways. So there is a pretty good chance Sakuna might actually have more than double Yuta's curse energy, and we just do not know, and Yuta is only making that assumption because of how many domains he has seen Sakuna use. Some of you guys might also be saying, oh, Sakuna can't heal right now. Well, there's two ways Sakuna could potentially heal and it could get explained. Number one, Sakuna's RCT isn't actually slowed down by this point, and he just needed a little bit of time for that, and he like focused on that during the giant purple explosion to restore his RCT, which I see as unlikely, but even more likely is Sakuna actually unchimeraed the deer from the Agito Curse Spirit Fusion, because as several people have pointed out, the antlers are gone, so this could be Gege doing a little bit of foreshadowing, a little bit of an Easter egg, that hey, he might have unsummoned the Agito deer from the Chimera. And there's also a good chance it got totality into something else, and an even better totality is coming to heal Sakuna. We don't know yet. However, those aren't the main reasons that I do not think this battle is over yet. There is another much more important reason that I don't think this battle is over yet, and it is so much more important. Well, it's a few more important reasons. Number one, the character said the battle was over and that Gojo has won. And as anyone has ever watched fiction, you should know that if a character says another character has won, you're dooming that character to lose. Tell me, whenever have you seen a character say they have won without another body dropping and being either knocked out and dead? and that character ends up winning the fight. Okay, that's not the most important reason. Now I'm actually gonna get into the real important reason, and those are a few reasons. Number one, Sakuna still has way too much left to lose this fight right here and now for so, so many reasons. Number one, he hasn't actually shown off his actual curse technique yet, which I'm gonna get into what I think his curse technique is later and why you guys should all be worrying out for that, because I have a theory around that and I'm gonna get into that later in the video. For the people who think Yorozu actually gave Sakuna a gift, he still has that. I'm still in the heavy belief and in the heavy camp that it was Sumiki who made the gift for Megami and not Yorozu who made the gift for Sakuna. I have an entire theory going over that, but I do believe that it's a gift from Sumiki. But for the people who do think it's Yorozu and not Sumiki, there's still a chance for that to come into play as well. There are other characters who can interfere, but I see this being the least likely because this is a fight for their lives on both the good guys and the bad guys side. And I'm not gonna lie, if Kenjaku interfered, I think Sakuna would just straight up kill him. The second reason why I don't think Sakuna is done yet is, well, this is gonna be an obvious one. You guys have likely heard it before. Sakuna is not gonna die to Gojo. He's dying to Yuji and Megami. I'm not gonna go too in depth of why I think this is the case because there are several videos, including the one I have on why I think Sakuna shouldn't die to Gojo. I might make a more in-depth video on that in the future too, to add in even more of my opinions, and there are some good ones out there already, so yeah. Long story short, while I do think Kenjaku is going to be the final villain, I don't think they'll be the final villain for Yuji in particular, purely because of the lack of emotional connection between Yuji and Kenjaku, where it massively, massively exists for Sakuna because Sakuna is responsible for everything in Yuji's life up to this point that has happened ever since he's become a Jiu-Jitsu Sorcerer. 
And also Yuji has a literal narrator line that says, no matter what, even if you're being mocked, don't let the embers of your rage burn out. However, the third reason is actually a new reason that I haven't seen many people talk about, and that is what I believe the narrative intent of this actual fight is so far, and what each of the rounds are supposed to mean. The first round, I believe, was supposed to be everything we already knew about Sukuna versus Gojo, and how Gojo can overcome everything we already knew about Sukuna through his own intelligence, smarts, and his own ability to overcome and his adaptability because through his own ability he was able to overcome the barrierless domain something so many people saw as just an unobtainable wall and an unclimbable wall gojo was able to climb over it and find a way as well as with cleave and dismantle i believe the second part of the fight was intended to show what a full potential zenin clan leader could do and how that would do against gojo satoru the strongest member of the gojo clan in all of history and by having gojo not just take on maharaga but a tamed maharaga as well as a chimera that was relatively relative to Maharaga, albeit on the weaker side, and Sakuna who could fight alongside Maharaga and use Ten Shadows in ways we have never seen before, he has proven why he is above every single Gojo clan member at this point. And what I believe this third section of the fight will be, will be the true battle that we've all been hyped for, the true battle we have all been waiting to see. Not Gojo versus Megami, not Gojo versus the Sakuna we know and all the abilities we already know of Sakuna, but the true full power of Sakuna versus the true power of Gojo. The true power that allowed Sukuna to be known as the strongest in the strongest era of Jujutsu Sorcery. I believe we're about to see four-armed Sukuna rise up, the form that has been hyped up ever since Sukuna first got that little bit of art of what four-armed Sukuna looked like. And we're going to see that 10-foot behemoth fight against Gojo, and that will be round three, where we finally get to see all of Sakuna's powers in use. And there are a few issues that I see a lot of people having with it, the main issue being, well, how is this going to happen, and more importantly, how is he going to get past the Limitless Barrier now, if he can at all? So now I'm going to get into what I think Sakuna's curse technique it is, and why I think it will be so much of a threat, but I'm going to go into why I think it will be so much of a threat first. Which is, well, it's kind of already been implied that it will at least do something against the Limitless Barrier by Hakari's own statement that he's been saving something and he hasn't been able to go all out this entire time against Gojo just in case the students arrive. No, he hasn't been saving it for the students, he's been intentionally saving it against Gojo in case the students do arrive, so he's had to hold back. So I do think his curse, I think, will work on the Limitless. But that's not the only reason that I do think his curse, I think, will work on the Limitless. But now I'm going to get into what I think his actual true curse technique is. Now, I have done a theory already in the past on what I think his true curse technique was. I believe that Sakuna's true to her curse technique is the ability to consume people and turn what he has consumed into a cursed tool for him to manifest, whether as a full tool or as an abstract form for him to use in combat. For example, the flame arrows are displayed to actually be abstract and moldable when he molds the flame into an arrow. Meanwhile, we know for a fact Cleave and Dismantle actually is depicted as having a knife, but he just manifests the cleaves themselves. Furthermore, I believe he's able to get the cursed technique at the strength that they had at the time of consuming them and then amplify them with his cursed energy even more. This is supported by the fact that Gojo literally says, in the Golden Age of Jiu-Jitsu, Jiu-Jitsu sorcerers had sharpened their skills against him, but were ultimately defeated. The important part of that statement is against, which implies they had to fight against Sakuna and got stronger as the fight continued. He defeated, and if my theory proves to be right, devoured them, thus turning them into cursed tools for him to manifest at later stages that he could mold and use whenever he so pleases. That was what I believed his curse technique was, and truth be told, I still believe that's something he can do, but I don't actually believe that's what his true curse technique is. Or well, more accurately, I believe that that's not his true curse technique that he uses in battle. What I believe his true curse technique is, is the ability to nullify other curse techniques. Now this is my theory on what his true curse technique is for two reasons. Number one, and this is the lesser reason, when we see Sakuna, he is depicted having his own spear, and the main spear that is of importance is the Inverted Spear of Heaven. And as people have also been quick to point out, the Inverted Spear of Heaven also looks like it is missing a piece on top of that, that looks similar to Sakuna's weapon. However, that's not the main reason why I think that his ability is to nullify other curse techniques. The true main reason that I believe Sakuna's ability is to nullify other curse techniques is because of something that happened during his battle against Jogo in a very, very interesting line that Sakuna says, don't worry, I won't cheat by revealing my curse technique. 
when they were about to have a battle of firepower between himself and Jogo. And that is why I truly believe Sukuna's ability is the ability to nullify curse techniques completely. After all, why would Sukuna consider using his actual curse technique cheating, unless it was the ability to nullify other curse techniques upon making contact with their own? Because that's the only real way to actually cheat in a true battle of firepower. And before I go into the reason of how I think Sukuna even got this curse technique, I do want to actually go into why this isn't going to be out of nowhere and why this won't be just this random thing and why this is actually justifiable Sakuna is only choosing to use it now and not use it the entire fight. Sakuna is not someone who enjoys going all out from the get-go and he is not someone who would see this technique as a viable and fair way to actually win a fight and he'd just see it as cheating. For example, that's why he doesn't use it against Jogo, because he considers it cheating, but he's at a point where he actually needs to use this technique against Gojo. He also wanted to see everything that Gojo was capable of, which is why he didn't use it at the start of the fight and instead went for the Ten Shadows plan. Furthermore, I also think that this technique is actually quite strenuous on him too, and that is why he hasn't used it up to this point and instead focused on using his Ten Shadows plan, because it wasn't as strenuous on him in comparison to this technique. And finally, I could see this being something he can only actually do in his true body, and that is why he hasn't reverted to his true body yet, and he's been forced to use 10 shadows this entire time, and now we're going to get Sakuna in his true body using this technique. I also don't exactly think that this is out of nowhere as well, purely because of how Sakuna views combat, and he wouldn't want to use something that basically null and voids all sorcery-based combat, considering that's the main way he actually fights, and yeah. I basically think this is only going to be used to bypass the Limitless Barrier, and he's actually going to use the Curse Technique he has stolen and infuse his Curse Technique into the Curse Technique he has stolen and use it to attack Gojo. After all, we know that is something he is capable of doing because he literally says to Jogo that I won't cheat by revealing my actual Curse Technique right after he makes the Fire Arrow. So I could see the Fire Arrow also, on a side note, like being just a part of his Curse Technique, the reversal of his Curse Technique, because what is the reversal of destroying Curse Techniques? The ability to steal and create your own Curse Techniques. Or I could just see this being Curse Energy Manipulation, because we already know Curse Energy Manipulation is possible to gain elemental factors. Look at Kashimo, who has gained lightning as part of his trait to his curse energy and we know that it is possible and it can get confused for a curse technique because hakari wasn't actually sure if the lightning was his curse technique or not i also can see there being some weakness into going in the forearm form and actually using his true curse technique which i believe that weakness is going to be it makes it even more susceptible and even more possible to get Megami out of sakuna's body and make Megami free again and have to make sakuna have his own body or search for a new body the reason that I believe this is actually a weakness that he has access to is purely because of a statement that was made by Sakuna a while back that Megami and using Megami as a form rather than his own true form was better for fighting the sorcerers. So I think the reason why this is the case is if he goes into the forearm form, it's actually going to be easier to free Megami and that is what the battle is going to end on, and Gojo dying to save Megami in the process, getting a true dub while also getting a loss in the process to make sure the plot can keep going and to get the ultimate final battle happen between Yuji, Sakuna, and Megami. There's also the potential that he might have access to True Totality as well, but I've already made a video on True Totality, so I'm not going to go on depth with what I think that True Totality is capable of. If you've seen that video, you already know what I think it's capable of. And if that is the case, oh boy, Gojo screwed. Anyways, I want to see what your opinions are in the comment section below. Do you believe Gojo versus Meguna is over, where he's going to stop using Ten Shadows, and we're going to get true Sakuna now? Do you guys think Yorozu is going to save Sakuna with her Sensu Bean gift to restore Sakuna back to full cursed energy? Do you guys believe the battle just overall is over? Do you guys think Kenjaku is going to come into the fight, or just something else is going to happen entirely? I want to see what your thoughts are in the comment section below. I'm going to see you all later. Peace.